what's up, Scott Balkan, here with Imagination Creation Films, and today, well, as requested, we're breaking down the RED camera to make it easy for you to understand when you get your hands on one. So we're gonna be talking about all the different parts of the RED camera and what makes it tick and all the different components that you can add to it or don't need to add to it, depending on how you wanna shoot. But ultimately, it's pretty easy. And before we dive in here, I wanna go ahead and ask that you go ahead and click subscribe because, yeah, you wanna be a part of this. This is cool. Lots more stuff like this coming out. Let's dive in. All right, so this is the basic components of a typical small compact red rig. Uh, this is the Dragon X right here. We have a battery, we have an IO expander, we have a monitor, we have a red tool, which you can see right here, just slightly out of frame. It's right there, yeah, you can see it right there. Uh, we have a handle, we have a top handle, we have media, and we have a lens. So let's just go through these one by one and really kind of show off what these things can do. We're just going to set all this stuff to the side. All right, let's go through this real fast. This is the brain itself. So if we look on the top here, you're going to see a red monitor connection. This is a cableless connection. That port is also replicated on the side. But basically, you just take your red cableless monitor, stick it right on there, and attach with two thumb screws. It's on there. It's no problem at all. To undo, simply remove it. No problem, super easy. There's also a red control port here. There's a lot of quarter 20s on top as well. Uh, these are the fan intakes. So there's two fans under here. They're fairly quiet. You can adapt them, you can change them. Um, they can get loud if you're in 120 degrees, um, but you know, use remote audio. There's some more quarter 20s. On the front right here, there are two scratch microphones. So you can run scratch at all times, uh, which is great in case you're sick. That's a problem or you're not syncing at all. There are two customizable buttons here so you can do edge uh, focus or you can do false color record button. Uh, this is a EF mount. You can put a PL mount, you can put a Nikon mount. There's all kinds of mounts you can put on here. This is not the standard um, uh, lens cap but it is made by GDU and I love GDU products. They make really, really good aftermarket products. Uh, started by Red, uh, President Jared Land and a buddy, and they make solid accessories. You can see inside here, let's see if you can see that, there is the red dragon sensor. The EF mount comes off with these four screws, easy to swap them out, PL mounts. This is aluminum, so be careful with it. Uh, I wouldn't hang a large lens without lens support, but you can run all day long with a normal lens, it's not a problem. It is an active mount, so it'll control focus by wire. Um, their PL mount is also active, so it can read information from uh, PL lenses that have such things. Inside there is an OLPF. OLPF is a uh, low-pass filter for light. There are different manufacturers for this. Red makes three. Kipper Tie makes like six or ten. There's a whole bunch. Uh, this one is the standard. Standard is great for overall. There's a low light and then there is a skin tone from red. The skin tone should be used really, I mean, only if you're really, really, really wanting uh, that little extra that the skin tone does, but it really looks good on the skin, but you lose about a stop and a half of light. The low light has uh, obviously better low light, but the highlights look a little strange to me. It's my opinion. Um, the uh, if you get a, like a light bulb uh, in there, it'll bloom oddly, but it's not it's not unusable. Skin is also slightly off, but not unusable. You can easily fix that. To replace the OLPF, pull the four here, pop your lens mount off. There's one screw in there, undo it, pull it out, put it back in, it is user serviceable. On the bottom here, we have two three eighths and a quarter 20. Very easy to mount. On the side here, we have the universe, User serviceable side plate. You can top, take this off and put on Red makes a module that you can control. It has a display. There's other aftermarket modules you can put on here that will give you pertinent information, allows you to configure your Red uh, if you're not using a touchscreen monitor. Uh, there's a Red 
button here that is to record and power on, power off. Hold it, it'll power up, takes about 30 to 45 seconds. Hold it down while it's powered on, it will power off. Just press it to stop and start record. The back here contains the red module connections as well as the exhaust vent for the fans. Um, this is a proprietary connection, it passes power and uh, IO input into the brain. Um, this is the SSD module or the mini mag module on the side. Just plug it in right there. These red mini mags are 120, 240, 480, and 960. For the most part, the red ones are the high speed 480 and 960, and the low speed ones are the 120 and 240. This is an older 512, and it is the high speed. Just put it in, you're good. There's additional mounts there, and of course, the monitor mount. Um, yeah, that is the brain in a nutshell. Let's build this brain. So the first thing I wanna put on here is I wanna put on a side handle. The side handle is also by red and it has a record button and it mounts up to the top right here and the control um, connection. So we just put it on there and then we go and screw it down using the red tool. The red multi-tool is Literally one of the best inventions ever. Uh, it has got a lot of Torx and Allen wrenches that are built in here. It's customizable. You can pull them off and on, make the tool you need, but it has all the tools you need for a red. So now I have a very, very solid handle on here with a record button. Another thing we can put on top here, this is the small handle by red. Uh, it is very small. Um, a lot of people don't like it because it's so small. Uh, I like it because I like to run a very small and light rig, and this one does not get in the way of the monitor. You can only get three fingers on it, so keep that in mind. This one you can grab a whole lot better. Speaking of monitors, let's put one on. This is the RED 7-inch touch. Uh, it is a 1080p touchscreen monitor. Uh, it is nice. It's not color accurate. It's not super bright. They do make a bright one. costs a lot of money. Um, they have a five inch, which is a 720p monitor. Uh, the nice thing about the seven inch is it not only goes up and down, but it goes side to side as well. The five inch does not. To put it on, just line it up and then use your thumb screws. Cable is mount, tiltable, flippable, rotatable all the way around. Very, very nice. And it doesn't get away of the handle. So now we've got this, let's, uh, let's put a module on here. Let's talk about these modules for a moment. There's a lot of modules you can add on to the back of a RED. This one right here is the VLOC IO, and it's basically the IO module and a VLOC built into one. They do make this with just an IO module, and you can then put on a VLOC, or you can put on a gold mount three stud, whatever it is you want. Uh, you can do that. They make these that are just power. They make these that um, use different older style batteries. A lot of different options on here. There's also a production module, which is quite large and allows you to run like full, full nice audio interface, a lot of different outputs. Um, this one right here, you have a microphone and headphones, USB. There's a uh, PTAP up top. There is a sync and a control. There's HDMI, SDI, and a power. And to put it on, well, it's quite easy. You line it up on the back, it locks right in place, and then you use a Torx and just get it tight. You don't need to uh, over tighten it. It's not, it's not going to, uh, you know, fall off on you. I've never had a problem or heard of such a thing, but I guess it's possible. I just hand tug it, hand tug it. Don't go there. I just hand tighten it. So now we have, yep, a full IO module and a power module on the red. Getting pretty easy, isn't it? Let's, uh, let's do a lens. Let's take that off and then push the button. We're gonna use the Sigma 18 to 35, one of my favorite lenses. Uh, it is awesome as a lens for a Super 35. Tighten up that ring always. And yeah, like I said earlier, if you're gonna put a long lens on there, use a lens support. 
it's definitely going to save you. Uh, this is aluminum and you could bend it if you're not careful. I mean, you could mount a long lens onto it if you're just mounting it, get your shot and take it back off, but I wouldn't travel with it. Uh, all right, let's add on a battery. As you know, my favorite is Blue Shape. Blue Shape batteries are the best that I have ever tested. Um, and uh, they just keep working. So we just mount it to it. And uh, if you want to eject them, right there's the power button or the eject button. And so now we have a configured red. Easy to hold, easy to carry, pretty light and compact, compact, compact. Uh, there are some other options here. These are red monitor mounts for the cable list to make them cabled. So you could add these to the bottom. This goes on the bottom of the monitor. This goes on the side over here or on the top. And then you can use a cable to connect it. Uh, pretty easy. If you're editing on your PC, well, obviously you need to get your data off. This is a mini mag reader. Pretty fast. Um, it uses USB-C and works like crazy. So that is basically everything you need to know if you're going to rent or buy or just going to borrow a uh, red camera. Uh, obviously, the older ones are a little bit different, uh, but not a whole lot. Same premise. Uh, the differences would be the wire versus non-wire for the monitors. But, I mean... Reds are not that difficult. You should not be afraid of them. They're actually very, very good. Yeah. Um, and I, I wanted to make this, uh, it was asked that uh, I uh, do a breakdown of it. And so here is part one. Part two, we're gonna go into the, uh, the menu system and show you how to configure and set up because that's also something you need to know. But as always, if you have any questions or comments, do feel free to put them in the comments down below. I do try to read and respond to each and every one, even if it's just to say thank you. I do have a Patreon or a PayPal if you wish to support me that way. You'll find the links down below. Remember to subscribe to this channel because we want you to be a part of this and, you know, you'd be a good part of it. Also, give me a thumbs up if you like this video. If you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down. We can still be friends. And as always, as I like to leave it, don't let your passions center around your life. Let your life center around your passions. Mm -hmm.